How does the brain keep itself oxygenated? Well, let's talk about it. So the brain is quite fascinating the fact that it doesn't actually hold any reserves. So if we have a lack of oxygen supply to the brain, the brain starts to die very, very quickly. And that is what we call the cerebral perfusion pressure, the maintain maintenance of that blood flow and perfusion to the brain itself. So how do we get CPP or cerebral perfusion pressure? Well, it's based on our flow of blood to the brain, our mean arterial pressure, against our ICP or intracranial pressure. So think of it this way, is MAP or mean arterial pressure is heading towards the brain itself. Okay, this is your MAP or your MAP. And your ICP is heading or your back pressure that's kind of putting pressure on your MAP. That's your ICP. And that's why we have a MAP minus ICP because that in truth will give you your cerebral perfusion pressure. And so this number, okay, ICP sitting anywhere between, you know, 8 and 11, Okay, mean arterial pressure is usually around, you know, 70 kind of idea, and you're left with a number that gives you your cerebral perfusion pressure, and you need to keep this number above 55, okay? Ideally above 55. Anything below 50, we have a serious problem. And so that's why we see increases in mean arterial pressure during times when we have increases in ICPs, for example, during head injuries. It's because if ICP increases and our mean arterial pressure doesn't, then our CPP is gonna drop drastically. And that is a serious problem. So that is how we, our brain is gonna maintain perfusion to make sure that it's never without blood supply. We've helped over 30,000 paramedic and EMT students sail through school and crush their exam. Any subject you struggle with, we have a fun, visual, and engaging class to help you master it. If you're ready, start a three-day free trial right now and watch your school stress melt away.